Hello everyone and welcome to another Warframe review, or today we're going to be reviewing the Warframe Titania. The one thing you guys need to know about Titania, if you want to know how to get her, you need to do the Silver Grove quest, and how you get that is you just talk to Niloka. You don't necessarily get the quest, you just play through it, and there you go. It's that simple. Um, Titania is a Warframe that is not very popular among the in-game people seeing as how her support team isn't exactly healing and it isn't exactly damaging um the one thing she does bring to the table though is a lot of crowd control if you can do it correctly so today what we're going to do is i'm going to give you my setup and i'm going to give you my personal grade for titania so the first thing you're probably going to want to know is what are titania's base stats well her base stats are 65 in armor 150 in energy, 300 health, and 300 shield. That's actually kind of low, but you gotta remember she is a support, so let's cut her a little bit of slack here. Her abilities. Every Warframe has 5 abilities, a passive, and 4 regulars. Her passive ability is called Dust Bloom. Titania gains a 25% increase on bullet jump travel distance, and it also creates a trampoline effect. It's very obvious, very easy to see, where her allies can also take advantage of that as well and gain the 25% buff for themselves. Uh, Titania's second ability is Spellbind. Spellbind is an ability that basically it's her main CC ability and it's very, very cheap. Um, enemies can still be damaged inside of it, which makes it great and wonderful. Now the way it works is, you use it on an area, not an actual target. You target like a small area, and everything in that area basically just becomes a floating little walking pinata. And you do whatever you want with it, let it sit there, let it die, do whatever. It's yours. Um, the good news about Spellbind is if you will cast it in an area and your allies are in that area, it also has a secondary effect of making whoever your allies are, or yourself, immune to all status effects. So it also has the added benefit of that great, great double header. Um, Titania's second ability is going to be called Tribute. This is where her abilities start getting really really complicated um tribute basically does a little bit of damage to an enemy and it freezes that enemy so again a form of cc awesome great now um when you do this you're gonna get a chance okay so you get one of four buffs and it's completely random on which one you get well not not completely random it all depends on what kind of enemy you use it on so really as long as you're playing smart, you can stack these up pretty high and get some pretty significant increases. So what's going to happen is, the first one is going to be called Dust. This one reduces the accuracy of enemies within 30 meters around Titania by 10%, okay, for 120 seconds. Now, this can also be stacked upon by an additional 10% up to 50%. So you can do this five times just for this one buff. Now the way you get this one is you use it on the basic ranged enemies. Lancer, Prod Crewman, basically, you know, the very standard, very basic ranged enemies. And you'll get this buff every single time. Reduced accuracy. Okay, cool. Now what about the next one? The next one's called Thorn. Thorn, now this one is awesome, reflects 5% of the damage taken back to the attacker up to a distance of 40 meters so it does work on ranged enemies okay it lasts for 120 seconds and each additional stack increases the effect by five percent up to a maximum of 25 percent so you can do 25 percent of the damage you're taking back to the attacker it's awesome now any allies within 35 meters around that Daniel will also be affected by that whenever you use it the, this buff comes from any melee enemies. So anytime you use it on a melee enemy, you're going to get this buff. It's going to happen. Works great. The next one is called Entangle. Entangle is basically a slowing debuff. It slows down any enemies for 5% up to a maximum of 25%. This one's kind of meh. It's not that great. It's more. This one's more used as a CC be, for stopping a very specific target because to get this debuff 
you need to use it on the heavy armored ones. So bombards and heavy gunmen and you get it. Now, the last one is called Full Moon. This one increases your companion damage by 15%. Up to a maximum of 75%. Now, this one is the only one that only lasts 90 seconds. The other three last 120 seconds. To get this one, you're going to have to use it on summoned enemies or flying enemies. And you'll get this buff every single time. Now, her third ability is called Lantern. Lantern is, I would say, my favorite ability. But we'll get to that here in a second. Lantern is basically a ticking time bomb. What you do is you use it on an enemy. This one you have to target an enemy. And what you do is you put that enemy in a small space. And then the enemy just kind of floats around like a little pinyon. You can hit it. You won't do any damage to it. But you can hit it and it'll fly away somewhere. Kind of funny actually. Basically right off status. And when the timer's up. Or you choose to reactivate. It blows up. And deals a lot of damage. Um, one reason that makes this ability great is it kind of attracts all the other enemies and basically it, it makes it a lot easier to clear out a room like this one ability can clear out an entire room of smaller abs even on other stages now her last ability is what makes her fun as hell i will admit to you guys right now if you do not like the arcling missions titania is not going to be for you because the best thing about titania is her razor wing it basically turns you into an arcane you the ability says half a size. It's a lot smaller than that. It's more like a quarter. So, but your weapon change, your primary weapon change, and your melee weapon changes to two specific things. But they are affected by very general mods. So those weapons will be taken into effect on those. And you can fly around, you can evade stuff. It's really, really fun, really cool. You become really fast, really powerful. As you can see by the mods that are on the screen, I have built my Titania in terms of how long the abilities can last and how strong some of them can actually be. Um, to me, for my setup it works really well and for my place out it works wonders for what I can do. Being able to CC a very specific target or even a bunch of targets for 15, 20, 25 seconds at a time is awesome. I can put one guy into stasis, not have to worry about him, go kill everything else, then come back to that major guy. It's pretty fun, and it's kind of torture. As you can see with all of my mods, a lot of my abilities have a lot of increases on them, and it makes it so that I can pretty much play her as a CC from range. So, pretty much range weaponry is what you kind of want to use on her if you're going to go with my playstyle. In terms of a final grade for for Titania, what I would give her in the E to the S scale would have to be about a high C to a mid B, somewhere in that range. So I would say like a B, like a solid B to B plus, somewhere in that range. Um, I can't really give her anything higher than that as, as much as I love Titania, as much fun as I find her. I can't feel good about giving her anything higher than a B plus for the simple fact of all she really brings to the table is that CC and a couple, and I mean a couple, damaging abilities. Whereas the, the second damaging ability is more of a maneuvering type ability than a damaging ability. So she has one damaging ability quite a bit of CC so that that's why I rank her so highly is her CC is just all over the place so that that's the main reason she gets a somewhat high grade at a B plus for me she's a really solid B plus all right uh, thank you guys for watching uh, let me know which Warframe you guys would like me to do next down in the comments um, I am also going to start doing some of the more unpopular weapons just to get them out there and see what you guys think all right later guys